We're back here on the 10 count from Hollywood Smoke in Santa Monica. Steve Kim joined as always by Doug Fisher and Ken Miller. Very simply put, who's your fighter of the year? You know, when, when you ask who's the fighter of the year, you could talk from just a perspective of um, that fighter who the casual fans know about or most hardcore fans know about, or you could talk from like a worldwide perspective. Because on any given year, there's some flyweight in yeah. Thailand, <laughs> or, you know, yeah. straw weight from Japan, who was doing amazing things, winning world titles in his fifth or sixth pro bout, and then jumping up a weight class and winning another title. And you've had that this year. The IBF champion, uh, flyweight champion, a, a, a guy from Thailand. I'm not ruined wrong. Hey, you got I it. I can't believe got... I knew that. Okay, what I'm, about? I'm sick. Okay, so I'm he's, sick. A, he's, a, he's a legitimate candidate. Uh -huh. um, you guys can go look him up on BoxRec, and there's a, a, a junior flyweight, 21 years old from Japan, named Naoya Inoue? Inoue, yes. Is that how you pronounce right. it? Inoue? But let's take okay. the real world that we care about. Yes. Okay, so Very then simple. the real world, okay. Just name one. Not just sport. I, I like Terrence Crawford, and I'm going to tell you why. He fought three times. I like that, the activity. I like that he traveled his first bout of the year to win a world title, fought the title holder in the guy's hometown. That's Ricky Burns in Scotland in front of a hostile crowd in Glasgow. Totally outclassed him, won the title in his first, uh, his first title defense. He took on uh, an Gamboa. undefeated uh, Yuriokas Gamboa, who was a, a Cuban Olympian, a, a gold medalist, a guy with uh, a lot of athleticism, a lot of talent. He adjusted, had some difficulty early, adjusted. It was an exciting fight. He stops the guy, first guy to beat Gamboa. And then in his third fight of the year, he fights a top five contender, a guy who's rated high enough to where um, he actually earns recognition as lightweight champion from Ring Magazine. I like the fact that he fought three times. I like the fact that he was willing to travel, an undefeated American guy willing to, to, to travel overseas, which a lot of uh, American fighters won't do. Um, I like the, 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 the level of his uh, opposition. They weren't like A-level fighters, but they were all B-level fighters. And I like that he fought his last two bouts in his hometown in Oklahoma, I'm sorry, uh, in Omaha, Nebraska, and is, uh, Building, um, building yeah. up boxing in his own area. He, he, he essentially just stole my guy, uh, Terrence Crawford, for all of the stuff that he said right there. But my, I guess my honorary fighter of the year would be Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya was down for the 10 count with his addiction problems and all that stuff. Uh, Richard Schaefer has pretty, had pretty much took over his company and monopolized it with Al Heyman. De La Hoya comes back, and so far over the past few months of the year, he's been able to become relevant again, sustain it. He's responsible for ending the Cold War. So Oscar De La Hoya is my fighter of the year. No, he's the comeback person of the year. I think that's yeah. the award we need to kind of yeah. engrave yeah, on the yeah, plaque. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you some other names. Kovalev makes a case. He yes. fought three times. He wanted to fight Stevenson. That fight didn't happen, not because of him. I think toppling Bernard Hopkins, just dominating the way he yeah. did, an all-time great, I think that puts him in the running. Absolutely. Okay, I, that, I don't know. That, that win has historical Correct. significance because yeah. it may have been the end, that may be the last fight of Bernard Hopkins. Now, on the flip side, Hopkins was two months away from yeah. being 50. It's like you beat a 50-year-old guy. Yeah, I think okay? Kovalev here is the Susan <laughs> Lucci uh, of this particular uh, an award. The other guy that I like but does not have the strength of schedule as Golovkin. I think Golovkin was on pace to fight four times. His father dies, unfortunately. Right. Still had a very productive year, but I don't think we can overcomplicate this. I think it's Crawford. Yeah, it's Crawford. I mean, when you shut out a champion in Ricky Burns, go on the road, which so many fighters are loath to do, like, yeah. I'm above going to travel. That's one thing that I hate about today's young fighters. They don't think they have to have a passport when guys like Marvin Hagler had to beat Alan Minter yeah. in England with beer bottles being rained down. Well, they don't want to take right. the risk, and I, I think fighters who are willing to take risks should be rewarded. Yeah, and I was there that night, June 28th, in o Omaha Century Link Center. Let me tell you something, that was electric, and I think he's an important guy because he brings a center of boxing that is not traditionally a base. And Midwest. I, yes, yeah. and I'll say this, I think he has had such a good year, and he should thank Mikey Garcia, because Mikey <laughs> Garcia opened the door to yeah. him. So when he wins our award, he should thank Cameron Duncan, top rank, his trainer, and Mikey Garcia. And I'll say it in one year, I think at 140, guys, I think he's in line to fight Manny Pacquiao. If Pacquiao is still around, I think Terrence Crawford is the next superstar in the sport of boxing. No question about it. Okay, that's simple. Well, that's it for this edition of 10 Count. That's our Fighter of the Year. On behalf of Doug and Ken, this is Steve Kim saying goodbye, everybody.